Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity. Welcome to episode 39. This tutorial we are going to bring in our car and we're going to make it drivable. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the reason we're bringing in uh, vehicles now is because basically it's part of our mission that we've got from Tony. He has asked us to drive somewhere. So I'm going to show you a really quick, easy, awesome, and quite frankly, ingenious way of bringing in vehicles that you can drive. Now, you'll probably find that that sort of thing may cost some money because it's, it's a common thing that people want to have in their game but don't necessarily know how to code it per se. Luckily, Unity gives you something to get yourself going. And because you can combine a couple of different elements together, you can quite easily get working vehicles. And it's really, really cool. So you don't necessarily have to do what I do in this tutorial. You could, by all means, go and find some vehicles that you want to bring in that have um, the scripts and mechanics all attached already if you want to. Um, but we are going to go with something called the standard assets. Now, you may stop there and think, oh, standard assets. We're going a bit further than just the standard assets in this tutorial, so don't worry. So first things first, let's bring in a couple of things that we're going to need. Go to the asset store and search for standard assets. Um, there was a point where they were removed for some reason by Unity, but they are back now. Um, if you cannot find them, I do have a couple of videos on my channel about standard assets and where to get them if you can't find them on the store. But all you need to do is make sure you pick this one. They will always be free. Be sure never to be confused with some other assets that may charge that are called standard in one way or another. They are free. So if you click it, and I've had these for a good while, and all you would need to do is just import or download and bring them into your project. I've already gone ahead and I have them uh, just below, but there is also something else that I want to get as well. I want to get an actual car rather than just the basic car that it gives you. So let's search for car. And again, we want something free and it's entirely up to you what you choose here. But let's go with vehicles and let's go with free. And I've brought into my project this particular car here. And you can pick anything in all honesty. There are tons of good assets. It doesn't really matter too much as long as at least the body of the car and the wheels are separate. That's one thing to make sure of before you do anything because otherwise it can look a little unrealistic. But that's not to say that you can't adjust it. Anyway, I digress. I've got this car and I brought it into my project already. Again, it's just import, download. It's actually only four meg, which is really good to be honest. And there are a couple of different variations, but I'm gonna go with the good old yellow that it has there. Now, to start this whole process and get a vehicle working, we are just gonna simply bring in the standard asset car. So if you go to your standard assets and vehicles, car and prefabs, you'll have a couple of different ones here. Uh, the good thing about this is that when we get round to AI cars, we've already got everything we would need here. And the good thing about the Unity standard assets is you can use them commercially. Obviously, if um, you are earning over a certain amount, you would have to pay for Unity Pro. But I don't think that's going to matter, at least for most people's level of creating this kind of game. So you are free to use these assets just completely. So don't worry about any legality around it. So all we would need to do is bring in the car, and I know it looks a little bit odd. Don't worry about that. Uh, let's rotate it so as it's facing this way. So minus 90. And if I uncouple the game view and just bring it there, let me bring this down here because we don't have a camera attached to the car at the moment, but we still need to see it in motion. And the good thing is importing it straight away. There you go. It works. So we know we have the mechanics in. So the reason I'm using the standard assets is because I can. Anyone can. And there's no point in some ways 
reinventing the wheel, mind the pun. The scripts are there for us to use, we may as well use them. Much in the same way that people use the standard assets, but modify them uh, for, say, a first-person shooter. So, how do we make this become more of a car than a, a thing that's grey? Well, that's where our other vehicle comes in quite nicely. So, if we combine those two, we can actually use the mechanics of the car and the visuals of our actual car that we've brought in. And it is this folder right here, uh, HQ Racing Car prefabs and obviously like I say we have a different a couple of different ones I'm just going to use the yellow one so I'm going to bring that in uh, rotate it by um, 90 again to get it in the same direction and I'm going to scale it a little bit bigger to roughly match uh, the scope of our car underneath and now what we do is if we drag and drop that onto the car and zero out its position it'll bring it into a nice rough area and we can see that yeah that's not too bad that's working quite well now there are different ways of working with this vehicle you can stretch one of them either way but as long as the wheels are roughly matching where they should be you shouldn't have a problem at all so if I move that to about there and I may shrink the car lengthwise ever so slightly out there and I think that should do the trick so now both cars are meshed together as we can see and if one moves the other will move as well even if it is a little bit of a, a monstrosity right now but there we go we can see it moving so now what we need to do is if we go on the car from the standard assets and click on sky car it gives us the option to turn off some of the rendering. So if we select everything apart from the four wheels and untick and already you can see this coming together quite nicely. So realistically what's happening here like I say is we are combining different elements together and that's always what you should kind of do with assets because it's a really cool way of learning. So how do we make it so the wheels are a bit more realistic as to what they are right now well the good thing is we can actually go to our yellow car and unpack that prefab so we can move things around so on our car right click and then you'll see unpack prefab that will now give us the option to move our wheels into the correct position so for example wheel back left let's place that in sky car wheel rear left so that still allocates to that same with the others. So wheel back. Oh, I've put that in the wrong one, haven't I? Front left is there. So wheel back left is into there. Wheel back right. And finally, wheel front right, which is there. So they're now in each of those. But what we have to do is we have to make sure that they are centered and aligned. Otherwise, you will end up with a vehicle that when the wheel turns, it looks like it's got a flat tire, which I suppose could be good in some ways if you want to create that kind of effect and maybe will at some point because it is kind of an interesting effect uh, in fact I'll, I'll show you exactly what i mean because it can get a little bit confusing sometimes but all we need to do now is select those sky car wheels all four of them not the yellow car wheels the standard asset wheels and untick mesh renderer and we can see there our wheels are now shining through so if we press play, you'll see what I mean about the janky wheels. See so you go in there, it's going up and down because it isn't straight. It's a bit strange. So that is where we have to select these and make sure the position is zeroed out perfectly. It obviously doesn't matter too much on some of the axes, um, simply because um, it's... It, you know if you want the wheels further in you can for example if we want this wheel to be more in then we can we it, just move it it's as simple as that but again it's entirely up to you how you want your vehicle to look that looks kind of mad but i'm going to stick with that so now what we've got is basically the makings of our vehicle and it all falls under this car right here so Logically, we could have that park there 
And eventually when we get, well, I say eventually, next tutorial, when we get in the car and drive it, there we go, then you can see what I mean. So at the moment, this car is drivable. Don't get me wrong, we can actually drive this car if we want to. So let's give it a go. There's a lot more that you can do with this. You don't necessarily have to uh, do what I do. Um, I think one kind of cool idea that I would like to actually do before I end this tutorial is to show you what the cars would actually look like. Uh, but what I need to do for that is actually turn off our character controls on our character on Contract Killer. So what I intend to do here is try and coordinate myself a little more and we'll see the car go past on the game view. So the car is entirely drivable and I know that the sound is right there and it shouldn't be, but don't worry about that. We are gonna sort all of that. So let's see if we can get the car driving past. Cool. So one thing that's become apparent there is the car might be a little bit too small. Uh, let's increase the size of it before we end this tutorial just to kind of get things a bit more in scale. But best thing for you to do now is play around with everything I've shown you to get your desired effect, how you want it to look. So scale, I think two is going to be way too big. That just looks crazy. So let's have it as 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. So I think that's pretty much all we can show you. I mean, you can duplicate this car if you want to multiple times over, and you'll basically have tons of cars doing the exact same thing. So you just have to be careful and be mindful of what you're doing. Um, a good example of that I will show you in a moment is if we take that car, let's say we want another yellow car over here. And if I put it, let's say, over here, but it's coming the other way. So he's on this side of the road, for example. If we press play, let's pull the game view out so we can actually see everything in the scene view. You can see you've got the problem of both cars are being controlled at this point is not what we want at all that's not what we want but again don't worry about that at all because when we come around to it we'll be delving a lot more into the mechanics of how it works and how the cars um, are capable of being independent of every other car so for now what i would suggest is basically do what i've done bring in the vehicle find another car model if you want to. Um, but we now have the beginnings of our car. I think what we've got to establish is whereabouts Summertown is going to be. And I think we should have it probably over here. Actually, no, I think we'll have it over here somewhere, maybe this edge of the map or you know, something like that. So basically when we get into the vehicle and drive off, that will be where we head to. That's part of our mission. So yeah. Uh, another good idea before we go would actually be in the asset store, just have a look for some other cars or vehicles in general if you want, because the same mechanics are going to apply to pretty much everything. So even if you bring in a truck, a sports car, uh, anything at all, you can use the same mechanics that you've applied to the car to get it working. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to make it so as we can get into the car, drive it around and get out of the car as well. And obviously that will lead on to bigger and better things when it comes to getting other cars as well. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.